Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to configure your Sophos UTM box to securely access uh, your NAS applications from the internet. So it's going to be a complete setup guide on uh, Sophos and also a little bit on this Synology box as you know, we're going to have to have a little bit of configuration that needs to be done. So for the devices that we're going to use, we're going to use the ISP router for the port forwarding settings. We're going to use the Sophos UTM 9.7 for the reverse proxy, the web application firewall, the firewall and country restriction, the certificate management with Let's Encrypt. We're going to see also what is hairpinning and how we can you know, solve some problem with uh, the DNS in Sophos. We're going to talk about also client authentication that um, a little bit, how you can authenticate your clients with the Sophos device and we're going to talk also of the Synology with the firewall and application portal. So how this lab is going to, um, to work? So first of all, we're going to have our NAS here, which is listening for the drive application on the TCP port 8020, so in HTTPS. The NAS has the IP address 4.2. Here it's going to be 4.1 on the uh, Sophos box. So the Sophos here, we're going to use all those features here. We're going to have our home router, which has the DNAT configuration to forward requests to the one interface of the Sophos box. And of course, we're going to have our computers in, you know, in, on the internet and inside our network. As you can see here, there are two uh, URLs. There is the, uh, the fully qualified domain name for the drive application uh, for the web access. And you also have for the synchronization, you know, the application where you can synchronize stuff on your devices. You're going to have the same fully qualified domain name, but here we're going to use the default port, which is 6690. So the objective here is that with, with you know, one fully qualified domain name with the port 443, we are going to be able to call the drive application which runs on the NAS on the port 8020. And as you can see here, this is very important, what I'm doing is that for the internal devices, when it tries to resolve this fully qualified domain name, it is going to give us the private IP address of the LAN interface of the Sophos box. Whereas where I'm going to be on the internet, it's going, to, it's going to resolve to the public IP address that is given by, you know, the uh, dynamic DNS um, feature. So the reverse proxy, what will it allow us to do? So it's going to allow us to redirect different URLs to different services behind the same IP. Services will be differentiated by fully qualified domain names instead of ports for the end user. So this is user friendly. It is an alternative to multiple DNAT rules where you need to remember and configure different ports every time. You can have one fully qualified domain name per Synology application, which means that you can have drive dot something for your drive application. You can have card dav dot something for your card dav application, etc. So you can have the virtual host, which will be, for example, drive dot lab one dot ovh. It's going to redirect the request to the real web server, which is the IP address of the NAS and the service of the Synology application, so the port number. And then it's going to, re to route this, you know, to the side path, like the root folder of the Synology application. So it's going to allow us to expose to the internet only one port, and this will be the entry point to access all your backend applications, well, you know, from the internet and also from the internal network, depending on how you configure all of this. And you can make also, if you want, some client authentication with a basic, basic pop-up prompt 
a form or you know just no authentication of course if you externalize the um, the, if you relocate or also if you locate the authentication to the NAS, it has a better security. Um, but it's not compatible with Synology applications. But it is compatible with Synology WebDAV and Card DAV packages. You know, those type of, of authentications are basic, you know, of types basic, and this is compatible with the basic type of um, the Sophos UTM and I'm using this to protect my NAS from brute forcing attempts or just you know uh, to prevent them from directly trying to compromise the logging of the NAS the logging form or pop-up of the NAS and you will see an example with the public o o1 uh, public o1.ddns.net is my public fully qualified domain name to allow you guys to download my presentations for example and as you can see you can access this url from any country but you will have a uh, form authentication before you can access the nas so it will protect the nas against attacks on the login for login form so a hacker would need to first to compromise my utm box and after he would need to compromise my nas device so you know double security so the reverse proxy will also allow us to have other features like TLS termination. So we're going to have, you know, the TLS tunnel that will stop at our, um, you know, UTM device. There will be also TLS offloading if you want, which means that the encryption um, will be only handled by the Sophos box and not anymore by the um, NAS, which means that, you know, it's better in terms of performance. Um, I'm not doing offloading myself and I would not recommend it in an environment where you don't have, you know, the complete control or if you're afraid of being attacked, you know, for example, in an enterprise, I would not recommend using, you know, offloading, which means that you should have the TLS termination on the reverse proxy, but you should also have the TLS tunnel from the reverse proxy to the web application. So of course, if you don't do the second part of encryption, uh, then you can have better performance with your NAS because it does not have to handle all the encryption stuff. Of course, in terms of security, it's less good. And you can have also some content inspection because the web application firewall is going to search for attack patterns, you know, like XSS, SQL injection, command injection. And if it does find this, it can either just monitor the traffic or reject the traffic. It can also allow you to make an antivirus, antivirus scan for data in transit and also allow the IPS to analyze the network traffic to see if there is, for example, a vulnerability that is trying to be exploited. And you can have also the load balancing. It can block IPs with bad reputation. It can ha you can have also you know, to redirect some requests and it's compatible with Let's Encrypt, uh, at least on the 9.7 Sophos uh, UTM version. Now, now, what is the setup and the objectives? Hmm, mistyped. Okay, so we have one package on our NAS. It's going to be the drive package. This is one of the most difficult example that I'm going to show you guys, because this package is listening on two different ports. You're going to have the TCP port 60C90, which use for synchronization. You know, you have the drive or the cloud application on the computer, and you have the DS cloud on smartphones. Those applications are going to use the TCP 6690. Now for the 8020, this is a port that you configure on the application portal and this is used for the web access with browser and also with the drive application on smartphones. So we're going to make a setup that allows that with only one fully qualified domain name, which is drive.glabo1.obh, we are going to use both, both services, both protocols for the drive package. And this is very important because 
we don't want our clients, our family, our friends, or even ourselves to have to configure every time we go, you know, inside the network or connect from outside the network that we need to change the ports, we need to change the name, or we need to change the IP address. We really want to be very convenient for everyone. So the service 6690, 6690 will be NATed and the 8020 will be reverse proxy because this is a, uh, you know, a web application. It is HTTP based. Now, something important, this setup is a little bit complicated, but it is, you know, a high cost in terms of time for you to make this first configuration. But then after, when you add another application like the calendar application, for example, you know, it's just copy paste every time. So after this, it's way easier and you have a higher security. Now, in terms of the hosting provider, so we have our dynamic DNS entry for this uh, domain. We have this IP address and then we have the C name for the drive application uh, where the drive.lab01.ovh should also resolve to lab01.ovh which should resolve to my public IP address. For the ISP router, so we're gonna have the port forwarding that will always go from the uh, ISP home router to my Sophos box. So the first rule is to redirect the traffic to the Sophos box to the reverse proxy service. The second one is to also redirect the traffic um, from the uh, you know from the internet to go to the Sophos box. And then on the Sophos box there will be another NAT rule that will forward the traffic to the uh, uh, NAS. And then we've got our let's encrypt entry because we are going to ask for a certificate um, for our Sophos box. Now, this is going to be the setup uh, that we are going to work on. So we're going to configure all this in live. So just first to see, we're going to see the application uh, portal to configure the port. Then on the Sophos box, we're going to activate Let's Encrypt to ask a certificate for the fully qualified domain name, configure TLS 1.2 um, for the reverse proxy service, we're going to create a real web server, which is your NAS and the service on which you, know you are listening. We're going to create a firewall profile for the web application firewall, and we're going to create two virtual web servers and assign the firewall profile. So there is there will be one entry for the request that come you no know, that goes to the one interface of the Sophos box, and one web server for request coming from the uh, internal network. Uh, I guess that you are not really obliged to do it like this. It's just that as I said, I wanted everything to be convenient for everyone, which means that it has a higher cost in terms of time to make the first configuration. Then we will configure the country blocking exception because we have country exception in place. We're going to configure the internal DNS so that every time from, uh, you know, for my internal clients, if you call the fully qualified, the public, fully qualified domain name, you will be redirected to the private IP address of the Sophos box. I will try to show you some authentication methods and to create the Synology firewall rule. So we're going to work on this right now. And on the last slide, it will be for the 6690 uh, service. So let's start with the um, Synology configuration. So we've got a first check for the ports that we're using. Uh, for the uh, Synology Drive application. As you can see, the HTTPS port here is 8020. So we're going to use this port. And of course, the port 6690 is not shown here because it is, you know, I don't, I'm not sure you can change this as it is integrated in the uh, Drive server package. In terms of security, we will need also to configure the firewall with this entry here. So just to show you the source IP that I need to allow for the web application firewall is this source because this is the um, 
the, the network interface of the Sophos box, which is in front of the NAS. So the reverse proxy will use this IP address to contact the NAS. So this is the one that you need to allow. So we're going to have in the list of the ports, we're going to have the port 8020 that we're going to allow from a specific IP, which is of course the uh, Sophos UTM and the action will be to allow. And also for the, for the other part of the video, for the uh, service CCC90, it's the same principle. You're going to have the 6690 TCP port destination to allow. Now from the source IP address, it has to be all because um, the Sophos UTM is not going to reverse proxy this traffic. So the IP address that the NAS will see will be the real IP address of the clients on the internet. You can also make a location-based rule, but I'm not doing this on the Synology. I'm going to do this on the UTM. And we have to allow. So those are the two only firewall rules necessary to make this setup uh, work. So now let's see uh, for the um, Sophos box how to configure it. So we're going to go to the web server protection, to the certificate uh, management. We have, we have to, um, to configure the TLS 1.2 um, uh, protocol because, you know, it is safer. So you need to go here. Uh, no, sorry, not, this is not the, the, the correct tab. Sorry, guys. We need to first to allow the Let's Encrypt certificates. Uh, so we're going to check the box here and you are going to click on Apply. And it will configure, you know, the possibility for you to use the Let's Encrypt certificate uh, instead of using uh, self side certificate. So this is the first step is to allow this. Then the second step, as I try to do, is to go to the web application firewall advanced and configure the minimum TLS version and put 1.2. So you have a higher level of security. Now we need to, uh, we're going to ask for a certificate. So now as I'm using the country restriction, they will not be allowed the Let's Encrypt servers to connect to my Sophos box. So for the sake of this video, I will, ju I will just disable um, the country restriction completely. Of course, I can try to find from which countries are the servers, probably the United States, and I could make a specific rule for this. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to deactivate it. And as you can see here, I'm blocking every country from contacting me unless I create a, um, an, a, a, an exception rule for a specific type of traffic. I will never allow a country to possibly connect to any kind of service. So we have disabled this and now we are going to create the new certificate for this domain, for this fully qualified domain name. So just sometimes it's a little bit slow. So we are going to create one. The name is going to be uh, Drive Lab, let's say. Uh, we are going to ask for a Let's Encrypt certificate and it should the request should be received on the one interface of the Sophos box. And we said that the domain is drive.labo1.ovh. And labo1.ovh, we're going to save. And we are going to wait a little bit. It can take a couple of minutes, providing it does not fail. I hope so, so that it will not fail. So we wait. Um, now, what is the next that we have to do? We've done the Synology application portal and the Synology firewall rule. We have activated Let's Encrypt. We have asked a certificate and disabled the country restriction first. And we have configured the TLS 1.2 on the advanced tab. So now we have to go and configure a real verb web server. So we go to the web application firewall. We go to the real web server. So mine already exists. So I guess that it will now 
allow me to create another one you know with the same settings so i will just show you the one that i have so here we have uh, this uh, if you create one this is what you will see so you need to give give it a name we call the dr for drive and the port 8020 because this is the backend port that the service is listening uh, on to and then we have to create of course the nas um, entry okay so it's a host that we need that you need to create if you did not create this first you need to create a host here and you can configure the name nas and there you can configure the ipv4 address here so this is what i done for my nas entry here and for the rest i guess you can just keep the settings the port 8020 is an https port so you need to keep this in mind now we have created our uh, backend service now for our virtual web server so we are going to create a new one which we're going to call you no know, lab one drive something like this the interface we are going to say first that we would like to go through the reverse proxy for the uh, where is it for the lan interface which is my wireless it will be an https connection and it will wait for the port um, 443 okay so it will listen on the a reverse proxy service for the port 443 now i have a doubt can the uh, i have a doubt is the certificate present okay drive drive lab and as you can see here the domain is pre-configured because it looks at the entry you know on the um, how you call on the certificate and then you have to forward this to the real to the real web server which is which is i forgot the name uh it was the default one that i already had which is the uh, uh drive real web server and we can if you want we can already save you can disable compression support uh i you need to disable this for security reasons because compression can create a security hole uh, we don't need to rip out HTML and if you want you can pass the host header if you want and we call this actually the int uh, internal okay we call this the internal entry and then we can click save now we have to go back to the uh, drive internal you can clone this entry and say that this is now for the internet it will be for the external one address and there is no changes here whatsoever it's still the same it's just that it needs to listen on both interfaces the internal one and the external one so we're going to activate all this and normally well this is not normal there is an error which means that it's not able to uh, probably not able to contact the um, how do you call uh, the backend service but it should be able to access this okay it can, it can take a minute to you know to, to 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 verify if it's accessible if you do not configure the firewall rule on this synology this will be in orange for example so now we have created basically you know our reverse proxy entry now we also need for security reasons to create a firewall profile the firewall profile is going to allow us to create um, some security settings so i already have one for my drive application and as you can see if you create a new one this is what you are going to see so you can give it a name you can you know either monitor the traffic so you can have some logs of what is you know going on um, it will not reject the traffic if there is an sql injection for example or you can reject the traffic there are some hardening things that you can do i will not go into the details because the um, the the user manual is very well you know documents everywhere everything but this is just my setting we are a block client with bad reputation i skip remote lookups for client with bad reputation i think this is an you know additional way to verify i have disabled this feature because uh, my phones were not able you know with the 3g connection they were not able to connect because they were considered bad reputation with this second setting so i just did this 
I did this three years ago and I never changed. I need to make some common thread filters. So it should, you know, activate all those uh, categories and rigid filtering, which might lead to false positive because it's more strict. And of course, if you have some things that are not working, you have to enter some uh, exception to the WAF rules. Uh, those uh, those um, are ID, you know, those are ID tags for some attacks, for some rules on the WAF. And you can, um, when there is an attack, for example, not really an attack, but a false positive, you can whitelist this uh, rule. And here you have everything that it's able to, you know, to recognize and to prevent for, you know, if someone attacks you. And you have the antivirus scanning if you want, single scan, dual scan. It's only single scan, I think, for the free license of Sophos. The direction can be uploads and downloads or upload only, download only. Block unscannable content. This means that when you have a content that is uh, corrupted or encrypted. So this, you need to be careful with that. You can also block uploads by MIME tabs if you want and uh, block also unscannable content. And there is, you know, some scan timeout and scan size limit. And this is it for the uh, security. So of course, there is two ways of working. There is the uh, monitor way. So you can use the monitor setting, for example, if you would like to have, you don't want to block people from using your service. So you will enter the monitor first. It will allow you then to have a visibility on which WAF rules you are triggering and which one you need to whitelist. So you can do, this is the first one, you, for, you monitor first and then you, um, you can, after this, when you have made some exceptions, you can reject the traffic. So this is the first way. If you do this, you need to, um, the, the good practice would be from a safe device uh, that you control, for example, your personal laptop where you never had any kind of problems with it, and your phone, you need to access your application and you need to do a lot of things, you know, like uploads, downloads, uh, creating stuff, um, uh, reading documents, photos, videos, music files, blah, 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 everything. And then you can whitelist every alert that you have, for example, because if you do not whitelist, if you reject after this, well, the application will not work. So this is the first way of doing so, which is easier, but you need to have a trusted client in your hands and only do this only from the internal network. From the external network, you uh, don't listen to, uh, don't read, um, what is going on with the uh, external clients to make whitelisting because you might allow some attacks. And the second thing that you can do if you do not want to monitor that this is a lot of work is to reject the traffic, you know, uh, completely for the first time. And this, it will not allow, you will not be able to access your NAS anymore. You will need to go through the, you know, through the live log of the web application firewall and tr and whitelist everything you see that forbids you to connect to your NAS. And then every time you do something, you check and you whitelist if it's necessary. This is another way to go. It's more secure, but it's very time consuming and you also might forget some stuff. So now we have created our uh, profile. So we need to configure it on the uh, virtual host. This, once again, it's not mandatory to create the firewall profile, but, well, you should, because that's the point of how to protect your system. So it was the drive, um, it was the drive application here, and we have the, um, and we need to also make the other one here. We're going to make the uh, so me i can i can reject the traffic because i've whitelisted a lot of things unfortunately sophos tells you that you should not whitelist certain of the uh, you know make an exception for certain rules because it might you know you might have 
uh, less good protection. Unfortunately, if you do not deactivate or whitelist those rules, you cannot use your NAS. So this is, well, very annoying, of course. Okay, so now we have configured the web application firewall, which is good. And uh, for the site path routing, so it will route, you know, to the root folder of your service here. And it created something. This was created automatically. Okay, and if you want, you can have what is called also um, access control, which means that you can have you can whitelist or blacklist some networks, which can be practical, you know, if you need to, to do so. Uh, you have some other things here, sticky session cookie, hot send by mode and WebSocket path through. This you might not really need to, to touch. Um, and for the reverse authentication, uh, if I can give you just a word on it, so the reverse authentication is going to allow you to ask the clients to authenticate themselves through a basic prompt or with a form, uh, you know, a form to, um, to uh, how do you say, to authenticate before accessing your NAS, which gives you a higher level of security, but is not compatible with Synology applications. It is compatible with WebDAV and CardDAV, and so I'm using this myself uh, to protect my system. Now, as you may know also for some of you, I'm putting my presentations on YouTube on a, a fully qualified domain name, which is public01.ddns.net. And as you can see, when you try to, to enter this, on the port 8081, it's going to ask you for a, uh, you know, authentication. And this is what I have actually done here. I have said that for the public users, which is the YouTube user, for example, so this is a group, uh, if someone tries to connect through it, they will be redirected to the URL that they requested. Uh, I'm doing some stuff here, I don't remember exactly. And, I, and that's it. Actually, you just say that you would like to have a form authentication for your user. You can also have a basic one, but I don't like, I prefer to have a form. Um, and then you can, how do you say, you can apply to the, uh, apply those authentication rules uh, through the side path routing. Okay, so you can search for your, for my lab here, for example, you can edit it and you can say here reverse authentication should be public and this will have the public form that you have just seen before so this is this the a good setup now so you have um, an idea of, of how everything works but it's not over yet uh, now we need to configure the uh, how where are we we need to configure the blocking exception the country uh, blocking exception so for the country blocking um, exception, where are we? The network protection, firewall. So this is going to, we're going to say, so first I'm going to reactivate the, uh, uh, we're going to reactivate, I'm just checking something. Okay, so we're going to activate back the country blocking uh, feature because we were able to have our certificate. Um, it's true that I did not show you the uh, result of the certificate, so maybe I'm just going to show you before we we go. Um, because usually if it fails, I'm receiving an email, and I did not receive any email, so that means that the certificate should be okay. And I'm going to show you guys uh, just that before. And as you can see, well, it's okay. If there was a failure, it would have been in red. So as we can see, it's... Well, from today, it's okay. Now, for the country, country restriction exception. So this is also already in place. Uh, so you need to create a, um, we're going to create an exception rule, for example, that we will call the web application firewall um, exception rule here. We are going to block, uh, to, sorry, to skip the blocking for, the, for France and Switzerland in the list, you can also select everything if you want, and going to the external one address of the Sophos box using the HTTPS service. So this is for something else. 
but to um, for the HTTPS service we will not block traffic coming from France and Switzerland so this is the country restriction rule that will allow people to connect to the system now you may ask yourself but for the public website what did you do well for the public website I've did exactly the same but I just said uh, no sorry this is for the SMTP uh, you see this is the problem it gives you all the entire list so it's not really friendly to see so as you can see public share here we can see that uh, it's the same thing I have just allowed every country for the service 8081 which is the one I showed you before for the you know YouTube users who would like to download my presentations so this is the country blocking exceptions now we have to con uh, we don't have to configure the firewall rules because the UTM is going to implicitly allow the traffic from a network point of view, a firewall rule point of view, it will be allowed. So that's why we don't need to create a firewall rule for the reverse proxy. We just need to create a country blocking exception if we are using the country blocking feature. So now let's see what have we done so far. So technically, we are almost over. There is one thing very important. I said before something in the introduction video about hairpinning. I don't know if I explained it already, but hairpinning is a feature, you know, in NAT devices, like for example, your home router, which will allow you um, to access a service from your internal network, access the service that is hosted on another device also in the internal network and the network flow it will be in this case it will be um, from the internal device to the ISP router so to your home router and then it will go back to the internal service so this is a problem that a lot of people are having and they do not understand why it blocks uh, because the NAT device needs to be compatible with the hairpinning feature so this the problem is for example you have uh, in, you have exactly this case actually you have this public fully qualified domain name if i resolve it now it will give me the public ip address and therefore it will go through my isp home router and then get back to my internal network which is you know not really good in terms of security in terms of performance in terms of you know it's not really coherent to go from the outside to the outside to get back to the inside. So that's why we're going to create a DNS entry, uh, which will say that if you would like to access this public fully qualified domain name, you should resolve to the internal interface of the Sophos box. So this is what we are going to do right now. So we need to go to the net, to the definition and users, network definitions, and we are going to create a NAS uh, lab device, which is, uh, of course, a host. And we will say for the IP address, it is uh, the reverse proxy for my local network. So it will be listening on 2.1. Uh, and for the DNS settings, it should be drive.lab01.ovh if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think there's nothing more to configure actually, and we can just click. Okay, so just to show you, if I can, drive.lab01.ovh, oops, no, it's, it's not, sorry guys, it's not telnet, it's uh, ping. Mm. You see here is the, the public IP address. And now I'm going to say that, as I said, it needs to be the private IP address. Oops, lab. And here we have uh, everything. And I'm going to test this. Okay, so let's see if it took the entry and it's perfect. So the, now if I um, ask for this uh, URL, it will go through the... Um, <clears throat> Uh, through the reverse proxy of Sophos, which is uh, good. So now what do we have to do? I think 
Uh, I think that's it. Um, this should be enough. So now let's try. Uh, what is this? Okay, let's try to connect. Uh, what is it already? It's uh, drive.lab01.ovh. And as you can see here, well, it's working. We are going through the reverse proxy, through the LAN interface, uh, with a firewall profile to help, you know, to protect us from attacks. And uh, that's it. I think I'm just going to test for you guys uh, on my phone. I just need to be sure that it's working also. So just be patient. Just going to type this to my phone um, to see if the setup is complete for this part. And yes, it's working also, which means that if you follow those instructions, <clears throat> uh, you should be able to make it work. So I will just wait. It's a little bit slow, 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 very slow on my phone. And no, okay. So it's it's uh, it's definitely working. So that's great. Um, now, so this is the part of the uh, reverse proxy. Complete. I'm just, I'm just uh, thinking if I have explained and shown you everything, but I think that's it. That's it. That's it. Now, just to uh, to check. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Now for the last setup, it will be for the um, the synchronization applications on the port sixty six ninety. So you need to create as uh, I said before, if we just start from the Synology point of view, we have talked about creating a firewall rule. So as you can see on the NAS here, uh, on the firewall, we have configured for the port uh, CT690 from everywhere on the internet. So this is okay. This is done. For this certificate, we will uh, do this later. And now on the firewall, what needs to be done? So first, we need to create on the Sophos box a firewall rule. Um, I have one already, so I'm going to show you. So this is my firewall rule, which will say that if those sources need to connect to my NAS on the port 6690, it should be allowed. This firewall rule, you, I, I could have put any, but I did not put any because I'm having a public wireless network for you know external users um, so i don't want them to be able to connect to this service but otherwise i could have been more simpler and uh, you know put the any instead of uh, what i've done just here now after the firewall rule we need to create a country restriction exception rule if you have one if you use the country exception in if we look to the port 6690 you need to say that uh, like a little bit like before for the NAT, uh, for the, the web, the country um, exception that from France and Switzerland in my case, if someone would like to reach my NAS on the port 6690, they will be allowed. So this is the country exception rule. Then we have the DNAT rules on the Sophos box, which is also very important. Uh, on the NAT rules, I will go again to the 6690. You have two different rules. So why two different rules? Um, the real difference between those two is to which interface the traffic is going to uh, to go. One is for the external interface and one for the internal interface of the UTM box. And this was mandatory because as I said, with only one fully qualified domain name, we have to go, uh, you know, through the reverse proxy. But for the same fully qualified domain name, we also want to be able to go directly to the NAS. So this is a configuration a little bit special, and you need to have two NAT rules. So the first one will say for the uh, synchronization application, if you have traffic from the internet on the post 90 to the one interface, you should 
redirected to the NAS on the same port. And the same thing here, but if it's for the internal interface, it should go to the NAS. Now, there is a difference between the source, one is internet and one is cloud source. Cloud source is my, um, it's my internal networks. But this actually, you would not care. You could put any here and any here. I have decided to separate this just for me, for you know, so I better understand what I'm doing. And also, as I said before, because I have a public network and I, the, the public network is not in this uh, group. It's only, uh, you know, my trusted internal networks. So as you can see here, we have the how the, the, the rule is done. You can put also the automatic firewall rule creation, but I do not like this. I prefer to have a complete control of what is going on on my security device. And of course, you can log the initial packets, which um, means that every time someone calls the NAT rule, it will be logged. Now, what do we have? Uh, actually, we, we have finished this part also. And now for the certificate part, this is um, I, a little bit more uh, not complicated that I don't really like this part because the, um, the, the the certificate that you have created before for the reverse proxy cannot be used on the Sophos box for the Synology traffic uh, for the port 6690. So there is there are several ways you can uh, you can create a certificate for the port uh, for the service 6690, for example, from the you know. You can have one directly for the certificate and you can create one, for example. Uh, you can have, you can import one, create a self-signed or get from a Let's Encrypt. If you do Let's Encrypt, that means that you need to make some little changes on your Sophos box to redirect the traffic for the port 80, that it should go to the um, Synology NAS. So and sometimes I'm doing it because I need to do it because of a IMAP service, for example, I can use a new Let's Encrypt certificate or I can import one. Now, the easiest way actually for me, because I don't want to play with all those redirections, I can just go to the uh, web server protection certificate management and what I can do is just to export the certificate, okay? What I don't like here is that the uh, the Sophos will export it in a PFX12 format, I think. So if I try to do, 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 download, you know, PKCS12 uh, format, and this is not compatible with the uh, Synology. It has to be a PEM certificate. So you could use, I think, I don't know how it's called, OpenSSL, or I don't know what, or well, there is also another website which can, uh, which I, of course I do not recommend to do this because of a private key. Uh, you know, you should not have a private key disclosed on the internet. But you can uh, transform your certificate to a PEM certificate and then import it on your NAS. So you can see you, have, you will have the private key and the certificate. And then, of course, as usual, you need to configure the certificate for the uh, it will be for the Synology Drive server because this is listening on the port 6690. So this is where you should uh, do it. Um, as you can see, I'm also a lot of services with some certificates, but I'm not using them at all because everything is handled by the uh, Sophos box, except for the port 6690, as I said, because it is a traffic that is natted, and for the IMAP traffic, because once again, this is also natted. The Sophos box cannot reverse proxy this kind of traffic. Uh, so I think, let me see, let me see, I think we have, we, we have done everything. So this was one of the most complicated examples because there is two types of protocols that need to be handled differently, but you are using only one fully qualified domain name and you need to be able to handle all of that. Uh, with the Sophos box, so it's easier for you for your clients. Um, so I hope uh, I hope I, uh, just wait a second because um, did I forget something? Now if I make uh, no, this it it will work. Drive dot lab one dot ovh on the port sixty six ninety. Well, it's working as you can see. So everything is okay. So I hope that. Uh, this video has been informative for you on how to securely set up everything and 
if you have any kind of uh, questions feel free to ask in the comment see you next time